All right, guys, check this out. We got a 2006 Articat 400 here in front of us. I wasn't gonna shoot a video on this thing. I was just gonna try to get in and out of the shop and I was like, you know what? I did find the problem and I kind of knew what it was. I've done three or four of these in the past and it's had the same issue every time. So basically what I've already done on this thing, it had a no spark issue. So what the customer said, they're riding it with the start, it had no spark. I said, well, man, it's probably as if it's intermittent spark or no spark. He said, absolutely no spark. We changed the spark plug, blah, blah, blah. So of course, you know, I'm gonna check all that stuff. Or I did check all that because I'm way ahead of you guys in this video here. Um, so a lot of times these things have an issue with the flywheel. The flywheel gets hot and the magnets, magnets shift or they fall off of these things. So the first thing we do, we check, of course we check spark, clip back, I clip back the, um, the spark plug wire, put the, coil, put the spark plug boot back on, checked it, no spark. Uh, so all right, the next thing we're gonna do after that, we come over here and then we check out the uh, source coil or the pickup coil for the crank. One's a trigger, one's a source. Test that, turn it over, uh, check the ohms, ohms are perfect on the trigger. Check, check the next one, ohms are perfect on the source. Let me look at my phone and I'll tell you exactly what colors those are and uh, what, what the ohms are supposed to be on that. I'll, let me look at the manual here real quick if I can pull it up again. So on the 400 like I have here, if it pulls up on my phone. So magneto coil resistance, the trigger is between 160 and 240 ohms and that would be the green to blue wire. All right, that's resistance, so make sure you're on ohms. And the source is less than one ohm between the yellow and white. The charging on that one is less than one ohm between black to black, all right? Now, you do a peak voltage test. Get yourself a peak voltage reader, man. It's super simple to get. Order one off of Amazon. You plug it in where your uh, leads go on your multimeter, turn it to volts DC, and you can get peak voltage. And then I'll tell you if the thing is actually showing, uh, is actually triggering and giving you the voltage you need. So basically on this one here, the magneto coil peak voltage is 5.04 through 7.56 volts between the green and the blue wire. And then it was 0.7 through 1.05 volts yellow to white. Now when I checked it and I stuck it on there and I turned it over, like I said, I got the right ohms, but when I turned it over checking peak voltage, I got, um, I got nothing between the green and blue wire. And then, the, and then uh, I'm sorry, I'll take that back. I got nothing between the yellow and white wire, but I got something between the green and blue. So I had the source, but I didn't have the trigger uh, or vice versa, whatever exact, I can't remember it, I, whatever it was, one of those two. So that led me to believe that we have a problem with either the trigger or the flywheel. So let's walk over here to the other side and take a look at what I found. All right, so we're on the left side, the stator side of this thing. So took all the bolts out, drained the oil, took all the bolts out and everything, oil cooler hose, all that down here. So right here, right off the bat, as soon as I opened it up, I saw the magnet was missing. What happens is these get really, really hot and the glue goes bad and the magnets start to either slide apart like this, causing intermittent spark or getting sucked up against the stator like this one is, losing all its spark. You can see how these are uh, got a nice little gap in them. They're not really big like this one. This would cause intermittent spark. I think this is the first one I've had where the actual weight has, or the magnet has come all the way off and stuck to the stator. Usually I have them started sliding all together, leaving a pretty big gap down here. So basically you gotta take out all the eight by 610 bolts here, six by 10 bolts there. Uh, and then the big guy right here, it's I think it's an eight millimeter bolt with a 12 mil head. And then you pull, pull that apart and we'll go ahead and order up a new rotor. For this thing the stator looks fine i don't see any damage on the stator anywhere but again that glue as you can see that glue goes bad and it creates these huge gaps like that so and that causes a no a no spark issue so i'm going to go ahead and order up a rotor for this thing uh and we'll get that installed i'll tell you the torque specs on that when it comes in which is probably going to be a few days till that comes in but like i said it's going to be a short video because I was just trying to get this quad in and out of the shop while I have other videos edited for you guys already. But I was like, you know what? Let me make one. I don't get an Articat in here very often that has this issue. And I know a lot of guys battle this issue going intermittent spark or no spark at all. Uh, and that's usually the culprit's gonna be the flywheel on some of these. So always check your uh, source coil, your pickup coil, your crank trigger, and then open it up and make sure that the magnets didn't fall off of this. A lot of these also, a lot of them will be like the new updated flywheel. These will all be, uh, capture between a metal piece on the inside. It won't be freewheeling like this. So the new style ones have a different rotor than what this does. So I'll get that ordered up 
we'll get this thing off of here. Uh, I'm just gonna pop that off with my flywheel pullers and uh, we'll get that order order up and we'll reinstall that. All right guys, so we're back with this uh, Articat 400 here. Um, like we said before, remember seeing the magnets come off, very, very common issue. Here is the new style rotor. It's all encapsulated with uh, metal around it. So it doesn't have that opportunity to come off completely. Now, there is always a possibility for them to come loose and move. I don't know what it looks like on the inside, but this is the updated version right here. So what we gotta do right now, we're gonna take the uh, one-way bearing and stuff off the back and we're just going to directly put it right here on this other one we'll flip it back over make sure all our bolt holes line up and we'll add red loctite to all of these eight mil bolts it's a six mil six millimeter uh socket or hex head here um allen that goes in there we're going to add a little bit of red loctite to all these we'll put them in there and i'm going to torque them down to probably roughly uh, 25 newton meters is what I'm going to torque them down to. I've been looking through the manual and I know the main nut for the flywheel itself is 116 foot pounds or 157 newton meters. And then the case bolts are 10.8 uh, newton meters or almost 11 newton meters or eight foot pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and run through, put some red Loctite on all these guys tighten them down, torque them to probably 25 to 30 newton meters, and then uh, go ahead and reinstall that back onto the side case. But I wanna make sure you guys got a look at it to see the difference here compared to that one there. Super common problem, like I said many times. Um, I have to get more red Loctite right now. So I'll get this all back together, torque it down. We'll slap it back on the unit and we'll take a look at it. All right, so we got this all back on there. We got it all torqued down, red Loctite on that so they don't back themselves out. Uh, gonna go ahead and line up the Woodruff key slot here on the side. And we may have to spin this, uh, we'll probably pull out the starter gear here real quick. Put that down here and spin this just a little bit. You can get that, that way that one-way bearing will slide all the way in there and we won't have any issues with that at all when we go to start it. So that's all locked good. We'll clean up the surface of this case here real quick. Make sure we get this back in there so we don't forget. That would suck to forget that thing. So we'll make sure this is all cleaned up nice and neat. We'll go ahead and reinstall the side case. We'll torque all these down to, uh, like I said, 11 newton meters, 10 to 12 newton meters or eight foot pounds. And then we'll go ahead and reinstall once that side case is on, we'll reinstall the pull starter there and torque it down to 116 foot-pounds. So let's go ahead and uh, let's get this guy on there real quick. And we'll get this torqued down to 106. I'm sorry, this one's, a, this one's 116, not this one. This one's 116 foot-pounds. So I'll jam it up with my uh, Motion Pro jammer and then I'll go ahead and torque that down and we'll get that side case on. All right, so we got everything back installed. We got uh, 12, 12 newton, 11 newton meters on those, 10.8 or eight foot pounds. Um, now, what I do quite a bit on ones that don't have a mark, a lot of them will have this little dimple right here to line up the uh, shift knuckle. If I don't have that, I'll use my center punch and knock that so I know the mark where it was at when I got the unit, so that even right there. So now this unit takes 2,900 uh, milliliters of oil worst part is honestly is where the the fill's at so i'm gonna go ahead and add oil to this now uh and then we'll go ahead and turn it over and see if the thing fires off all right got everything back reinstalled everything torqued down uh steps back in uh i did leave the key on too long uh the other day i ran a battery down so i got it charging but let's go ahead and check this spark plug we do have the other spark plug still in the head let's see if we got spark now because we didn't have it beforehand, key on. And let's get close. Oh yeah, baby, we got spark. We didn't have spark beforehand. Let's throw the spark plug cap back on. Let's see if this bad boy fires off for us. All right, let me throw you back on the stand. If I can get the stand to go up right. All right, so there's that. Let's throw you, throw you. Let's go ahead and hit the button, see what happens here. Fired right off, 
though. It was a little bit noisy. Of course, we drained all the oil out of it, so we got to make sure that the uh, oil cooler gets filled back up and double check everything on it. We climb up here and just make sure we got no lights. Everything looks good there. No complaints, anything on the headlights. I got nothing on the headlights. I didn't unhook the headlights, so that's not an on me type deal. But if he fires right off, I'm gonna call that a definitely a definitely a win on that one. Full so of drive actuator, fuel pump. So I'm gonna let it run here for a few minutes. I'll double check the uh, oil height. But well off. Cool. Now it's starting to idle back down a little bit. There we go. Motor sounds good. Everything sounds really good on it. So there we go. That one is fixed. Man, the camera's kind of high. But uh, that one's fixed. There we go. You guys saw, uh, you know, I wasn't going to record a video like I said. And I was like, I was just gonna get this thing in and out of the shop as fast as I could. And I was like, you know what? Let me go ahead and just kind of show this very common issue on this motor and this Articat. Again, that glue gets crappy. The magnet slides out of the way. You lose spark uh, or intermittent spark. And you can see that time that the uh, magnet actually sucked up to the stator itself. There's nothing wrong with the stator. Stator is in great shape. New flywheel, you guys see the updated style of that. Stuck it in here, we torque stuff down, put it back in, had spark, hit the button, thing fires right off. So, gonna call this one done. One done. I'll double check the oil off camera. No point in you guys watching me do that. Uh, again, I have shirts, this is old, oh shirts. Shirts and hats, ha. Huh. Hats and shirts in stock. If you guys want one, let me know. I'll be happy to, uh, you know, I think 30 for a hat, 25 for the shirt, I think, shipped to you. Just let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you got any questions about motorcycles, ATVs, or UTVs, drop a comment below. Give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Limitless Power Sports Service and Repair, right here on YouTube that you're watching right now. TikTok at Limitless Power Sports Sir and Rep. And again, you can email me at limitlesspowersports78 at gmail.com. Again, guys and gals, I appreciate you tuning in. All the people that subbed, I appreciate that. I did check my analytics. 88% uh, of those who watch my videos are not subscribed. Man, if you guys could subscribe, that'd be awesome. Um, I think we're at 40, almost 4,500 subscribers. So things are going well. I can't complain too much uh, about that. But man, if I got the other 88% to at least subscribe, it'd be awesome. Again, thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you guys on my next upload.